where I live is uh, in the Pennines, in the South Pennines, and I'm very much surrounded by these hills and very aware of them. I've always, throughout my life, uh, been uh, inclined to walk over them, occasionally climb it, and yes, become very attached to it. So I have always kind of drawn it and um, been taking uh, rubbings of it, castings of it as well, pouring plaster of Paris onto surfaces, into moulds, and therefore having um, blocks to then press clay into, pressing clay into the rocks itself, generally recording it. Hello, my name is Diana Terry and I'm an artist who's been leading this project on landmarks. I have been looking at the land for some time and I've been recording it, painting it, drawing it, printing it and uh, pressing clay into it and recording it in many different ways that I can think of. And uh, I, I did that for quite some time and collected a lot of evidence and now I'm kind of moving away from source and have developed work that's more abstract in nature. And part of the recording was also to leave uh, paper, very special paper, uh, 400 grams heavy paper, big sheets of it that are um, like 150 by 120 centimetres in fields, uh, uh, well, not just fields, but fields that were part of um, a, a quarry landscape, as it were. Now, from these, I have uh, left them in the, I've done a full cycle of a year now, so that uh, for three months each season, I um, left them there and then collected the remains and brought them back to the studio uh, and in order to get, they're quite fragile obviously they've been out in the weather um, and snow and rain and everything so I've then reassembled them like a jigsaw back onto another surface and glued them down and then I am in the process now of looking at all four of them together and making them read together as a group but it has uh, I think informed um, my, my engagement with the landscape emotionally somehow as well as it's been interesting to go back from time to time and realize that this piece of paper has been consumed by the landscape and the animals that live in it. Uh, I find that my work is about texture and about place and surface. All the work I do is uh, evolved around that. Um, and I especially like it going into three dimensions. Uh, my uh, struggle to adapt to the hearing world has uh, kind of made me uh, engage again with physical making of my artwork so that I find that the um, Physical tactile processes of using clay and print, uh, printmaking are, are kind of lend themselves t to my uh, way of thinking. And I, so I've done a lot of research around the uh, landmarks or scars that are in the landscape of the South Pennines, and this has led me to working a lot <laughs> in quarries and. Um, where they, the scars have been made by people in the landscape and they're evident everywhere. Some of them have rewilded, but they're everywhere. And kind of following that through, I've done a lot of research to do with uh, the social history, but also with the geology and the um, wider kind of issues to do with quarrying and extraction. An important part of my process has been that uh, uh, I, ha I have, I am profoundly deaf and uh, this has impacted quite a lot on my work, big, well, big, my process, because I find it quite difficult to uh, engage with um, the art market and so on. But the funding has enabled me to focus my work uh, and aim it at the uh, fellow deaf people 
so that I'm pleased about that, that I can now uh, engage with a number of different centres and um, uh, organisations like Hearing Links who have promoted and supported me in this process. Uh, I uh, recently, uh, my, my work's um, moved on and I'm, I'm still obsessed with these bowls and uh, the, the process has evolved from uh, the sketches that I did and, and during the course of doing the printmaking and collage and doing the, um, all of that initial work some of it directly from observation on site, but it's the sculpting of the land into these hollows that fascinated me. And I find it quite visceral, quite bodily, and quite uh, of the female form. And that is an important element to it for me. So this kind of as I say, visceral connection occurred. And when I've been doing the paintings, I've been painting from these uh, initial drawings and from the initial collages and prints to uh, la larger oil paintings. Now, these have uh, evolved in the sense that I was wanting to make them more abstract and less representational simply because I wanted to highlight the essence of what this was about, about this um, hollow shape, rather than be distracted by other elements that are in the landscape. I use them in, onto print, from print onto paintings, and that, that was quite uh, a big door for me because it meant I could see a way through to realizing my uh, vision of what I was trying to say about these um, places, these sculpted land, these landmarks that occur um, in this vicinity. So yes, uh, so uh, as well as that I was able to turn these small sketches, A4 size sketches and uh, collages around so that I was able to then uh, think of them in terms of losing the horizon, losing that sense of uh, a place um, and, and as I say focusing on the essence of it. So that the now I've, I've started developing a series whereby the bowl is actually on its side and in the same way the bowls that I am making, the actual physical ceramic bowls have become more and more tilted so some of them are actually vertical as well so I think this is quite a, a, a fruitful uh, process that I'm engaging in in the moment at the moment. The funding has been great because it's enabled me to put on uh, four exhibitions that kind of um, engage with the public and with um, other artists as well so that I've become aware of um, other artists who are involved in, in similar subject matter and uh, who are, are producing some very very interesting work and I feel that I'm kind of more critically engaged now and becoming part of a whole um, body of uh, artists, a whole genre of, of people who uh, are working with the land but not quite like the land artists of the 1980s who were um, generally speaking male artists who wanted to um, stamp their own um, ideas on the landscape but these are kind of more um, sympathetically engaged with recording and understanding uh, the land and in, in a sense though you could still call it land art rather than landscape art so I, I find it quite interesting the artists that have kind of moved away from the pictorial and representational into the more abstract so yeah th this has been a wonderful opportunity for me to do that as well as to uh, professionally engage with uh, four 
important venues. The Arts Council funding was uh, at a, a critically important junction in my professional practice uh, because I was at a point where I was uh, a bit directionless. I was producing work which was uh, uh, quite representational and uh, mainly because I felt that it would be um, it would sell and be popular and therefore I could carry on but having the council grant enabled me to really uh, look at it, the whole subject from a far more engaged and critically aware point of view.